So first of all, the thing that people first experience when they look up Python, there is a, it is very readable, but there's also a, like a spatial structure to it. Can you explain the indentation style of Python and what is the magic to it? Spaces are important for readability of any kind of text. If you take a cookbook recipe and you remove all the sort of all the bullets and other markup and you just crunch all the text together, maybe you leave the spaces between the words, but that's all you leave. When you're in the kitchen trying to figure out, oh, what are the ingredients and what are the steps? And where does this step end and the next step begin? You're going to have a hard time if it's, if it's just one solid block of text. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what, what a typical cookbook does, if the paper is not too expensive, each recipe starts on its own page. Maybe there's a picture next to it. The list of ingredients comes first. Uh, there's a standard notation. Uh, there's, there's shortcuts so that you don't have to sort of write two sentences on how you have to cut the onion because there are only three ways that people ever cut onions in a kitchen, small, medium, and in slices, or something like that. Right. <laughs> None of my examples make any sense to real cooks, of course, but... Yeah. <laughs> We're talking to programmers with the metaphor of cooking. I love it. Um, but there is a strictness to the spacing that Python defines. So there's some looser things, some stricter things, but the four spaces for the uh, for the indentation is really interesting. It it really um it really defines what the language looks and feels like. Because indentation sort of taking a block of text and then having inside that block of text a smaller block of text that is indented further as sort of a, a group. It's 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 like you have a a, a bulleted list in a complex business document and inside some of the bullets are other bulleted lists, you will indent those too. Mm -hmm. If each bulleted list is indented several inches, then at two levels deep, there's no, no space left on the page to put any of the words of the text. Mm -hmm. So you can't indent too far. On the other hand, if you don't indent at all, uh, you can tell whether something is a top-level bullet or a second-level bullet or a third-level bullet. So you have to have some compromise. And uh, based on ancient conventions and the sort of the typical width of a computer screen in the 80s uh, and all sorts of things sort of we, we came up with sort of four spaces as a compromise. I mean, there, there are groups, there are lar large groups of people who code with uh, two spaces per indent level. Uh, for example, the Google style guide, uh, all the Google Python code, and I think also all the Google C++ code is indented with only two spaces per block. If you're not used to that, it's harder to, at a glance, understand the code because the, the sort of the, the high level structure is determined by the indentation. On the other hand, there are, there are other programming languages where the indentation is uh, eight spaces or a whole tab stop in, in sort of classic Unix. And to me, that looks weird because you, you sort of, after three indent levels, you've, you've got no room left. Well, there are some languages where the indentation is a recommendation. It's a stylistic one. The code compiles even mm -hmm. without any indentation. And then Python really indentation is a fundamental part of the language, right? It doesn't have to be four spaces. So you you can code Python with two spaces per block or, or, or six spaces or 12 if you really want to go wild. But sort of everything that belongs to the same block needs to be indented the same way. In practice, in most other languages, people recommend doing that anyway. If you look at C or Rust or C++, all those languages, Java, don't have a requirement of indentation. But except in extreme cases, they're just as anal about having their code properly indented. So any IDE that the syntax highlighting 
that works with Java or C++, they will yell at you aggressively if you don't do proper indentation. They'd suggest the proper indentation for you. Like uh, in C, you type a few words and then you type a curly brace, which there is their notion of sort of begin an, an indented block. Yep. Uh, then you hit return and then it automatically indents four or eight spaces depending on uh, your, your style preferences or how your editor is configured. Was there a possible universe in which you considered having braces in Python? Absolutely, yeah. What well, was it, 60, 40, 70, 30 in your head? Uh, uh, what, was, what was the trade-off? For a long time, I was actually convinced that the indentation was just better. Uh, without context, I would still claim that indentation is better. Uh, it reduces clutter. However, as I started to say earlier, context is almost everything. And in the context of coding, most programmers are familiar with multiple languages, even if they're only good at one or two. Mm -hmm. And apart from Python and maybe Fortran, I don't know how that's written these days anymore, but all the other languages, Java, Rust, C, C++, JavaScript, TypeScript, Perl, are all using curly braces uh, to sort of indicate blocks. And so Python is the odd one out. So it's a radical idea. Do you still, as a radical renegade revolutionary, do you still stand behind this idea of space, of uh, indentation versus braces? Like what, what, can you dig into it a little bit more? Why you still stand behind indentation? Because context is not, the whole story. History, in in a sense, provides more context. So for Python, there's no chance that we can switch. Python is using curly braces for something else, dictionaries mostly. Mm -hmm. We would get in trouble if we wanted to switch. Just like you couldn't redefine C to use indentation, even if you agree that, it, that indentation sort of in a greenfield environment would be better. You can't change that kind of thing in a language. Yeah, It's hard enough to reach agreement over, over much more minor details. Maybe, I mean, in the past in Python, we did have a big debate about tabs versus spaces and four spaces versus fewer or more. And we sort of came up with a recommended standard and sort of options for people who want to be different. <laughs> but yes, I guess uh, the thought experiment I'd like you to consider is if you could travel back through time when the, when the compatibility is not an issue and you started Python all over again, can you make the case for uh, indentation still? Well, it frees up a pair of uh, matched brackets of which there are never enough in the world. Uh, for other purposes, it really makes the language slightly sort of easier to grasp for people who don't already know another programming language. Because the sort of one of the things, and I, I mostly got this from my mentors who uh, taught me programming language design in the earlier 80s, when you're teaching programming, for for the, the the total newbie who has not coded before in not in any other language, uh, a whole bunch of concepts in programming are very alien or sort of new and and maybe very interesting, but also distracting and confusing. And there are many different things you have to learn. You have to sort of in a typical 13 week programming course you have to if if it's re like really learning to program from scratch you have to cover algorithms you have to cover data structures you have to cover syntax you have to cover variables loops functions recursion classes uh expressions operators there are so many concepts if you you sort of 
if you can spend a little less time having to worry about the syntax. The, the classic example was often, oh, the compiler complains every time I put a semicolon in the wrong place or I forget to put a semicolon. Uh, Python doesn't have semicolons in that sense. So you can't forget them. And you are also not sort of misled into putting them where they don't belong because you don't learn about them in the first place. The flip side of that is forcing the strictness onto the beginning programmer to teach them that programming is um, values attention to details. You don't get to just write the way you write in English. Many of other details that they have yes. to pay attention to. Yes. So I think they'll they'll still get the message about uh, yeah. paying attention to detail.